Hey guys, today we will cover chain rule, which is a very important rule and it helps us to handle composite functions. Learning objectives are, as I said, uh, we will handle the derivative of a compass function and uh, we consider an outside inside rule, which is a, a practical way to remember the chain rule. And uh, finally, we will consider the derivatives of powers of functions using chain rule. So this is the main result of this section, uh, derivative of composite functions. As you remember, the composite function is, uh, it's a function, let's say that uh, you have f of g. So you have uh, first g goes to from some set x to y domain and then you go from y to another domain z so that's f and this become this becomes the uh, your composite function so what does the chain rule say it says if you have a f of g of x and if you want to take the derivative of this new function it's nothing but f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x in in Leibniz notation this is somewhat easy to remember uh, if your y is f of u if your u is g of x so this is the composition then dy dx is dy du dotted with multiplied by du dx as you can see uh, th this kind of a cancellation and then you sort of obtain dy dx so it's kind of an easy uh, way to remember however not always useful so we'll come to, to this one so let us verify the chain rule we are not going to prove the rule itself however for this particular example we'll see if the rule is correct so this is a composition right so there is a squaring function and then there is 3x squared plus 1 function so if you said u is equal to 3 x squared plus 1 then I can uh, consider y to be u squared okay and we would like to take the derivative dy derivative of y with respect to x by chain rule we know that this is dy over du and du over dx now since y is equal to u squared if you take the derivative of y with respect to u it's just two times du and du dx where u is 3x squared plus 1 so if you take its derivative with respect to x you get 6x plus 0 so that's it so this is 12x times du u is 3x squared plus 1 if you like you can expand it it becomes 36x cubed plus 12x. So that's by chain rule. Now let's evaluate it using direct uh, derivative rules. So we simply expand it. So 3x squared plus 1, if you square it, it becomes 9x to the 4 plus 6x squared plus 1, right? Binomial expansion. Now if I take the derivative, with respect to x, what is the derivative of 9x4? Well, the derivative of x to the 4 is 4 times x cubed, so 4 times 9 is 36x cubed. The derivative of 6x squared is 12, 12x plus the 0. So as we can see, the derivative, we evaluated using chain rule and the, the usual method first expansion and then take the derivative we see that they are equal so it kind of verifies that indeed the chain rule holds for this particular example let us consider another example an object moves along the x-axis so that its position at time t is given by x of t is equal to cosine of t squared plus one we would like to find its uh, velocity right what is the velocity we know that velocity is the rate of change of x with respect to time t okay great what we can do is this is composite 
uh, function. So you evaluate t squared plus 1 and then the, take the cosine of it. So I can write x as cosine of function u, where your u is t squared plus 1. Then this derivative becomes dx du du dt. And then here's the cosine of u. So if you take its derivative with respect to u, it becomes minus sine of u. And then it takes the derivative of u with respect to t, t, so it becomes 2 times the t. Now u, we remember u is t squared plus 1, so it becomes minus 2 times t sine of t squared plus 1. So that's the velocity as a function of t. In the previous uh, two examples, we tried to evaluate the derivative using the Leibniz notation. Now let's do a slightly different approach. Uh, let's say that I'm given a composite function, so y is equal to f of g of x, and I would like to take the derivative. So we know that uh, the, the chain rule is given as, as such, so it's f prime of gx times g prime of x. So I can regard this, this my, my f is sort of my outside function, and this is the function inside, right, inside function. So then how do you read this derivative? Well, here, here in words, the, you differentiate the outside function, right? So the f prime, so the differential outside function, you evaluate it at the inside function, right? So g of x, f prime of g of x, multiplied by, then what you do, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So if you kind of remember this wording, uh, it might become very convenient. Uh, in, in many occasions. So let's illustrate. We would like to differentiate sine of x squared plus e to the x with respect to x. So so again, we could do like Leibniz notation where we, we could set u is equal to x squared plus e to the x. But instead of doing it, uh, we can try this uh, inside outside uh, rule. So, so what is y prime? First, I take the derivative of outside, right? What is the derivative of outside it's sine right what is the derivative of sine this is cosine and i evaluate at the inside function so x square plus ex is my inside function x square plus ex and then what do i do i multiply it by the derivative of inside function so what is the derivative of inside it is 2x plus the derivative of ex is e to the x so that's it let us differentiate e to the cos x what is, what is my inside function and what is my outside? Well, I could write it as e to the u and then u is cos of x. So how you would evaluate it? Well, first I would evaluate cos x, right? That's why this is would be my inside function, inside. And then I would consider e to the u, e to the cos. So this would be my outside. Right, inside functions are evaluated first, then the outside. Okay, then uh, the derivative would be what? So I first need to take the derivative outside. So derivative e to the u is e to the u, right? But u is cos x. And then um, I would take the derivative of inside, which is derivative of cos x, which is minus sine of x. So this is minus e to the cos x sine x. Well, in fact, we see a general rule here, right? So as a general rule, if you have a, a derivative, if you want to find the derivative of e to the u, where u could be any any function, then it is simply e to the u itself multiplied by the derivative of the exponent, right? Derivative of u. So this is also a, a good way to mem memorize uh, a version of the chain rule. Let us consider a bit complicated um, function, tangent, 5 minus sine 2 times t. Uh, let's try to find the derivative. So here we will sort of apply the chain rule uh, two times. So what I can do is the following. I can set u is equal to my 5 minus sine 2 times t, then my g becomes tangent of u. So let's take the derivative of 
uh, g well derivative of outside is derivative of tangent so this is secant square of u multiplied by derivative of u right u prime okay now let's evaluate the derivative of uh, u how do you evaluate the derivative of u well derivative of u is derivative of 5 is 0 minus now how do you evaluate sine of 2 times t well here this is the composition of sine and the 2 times t so sine is my outside function 2 times t is my inside so this becomes what is the derivative of outside that is sine which is cosine of 2t and then I multiply by derivative of inside which is derivative of 2t is 2 so, so, so we're done so g prime of t is equal to secant square where u is 5 minus sine of 2 times t multiply by u prime so we found u prime to be minus I can place minus here if I like 2 times cos 2 times t right so you see I always go back to expression uh, in terms of t because I was given in terms of t this u is something that I made up right so I cannot leave my uh, derivative in terms of some u right it's not going to work okay how do we handle the powers of a function so my function is u and then I raise to the power n how do I take the derivative well if u was simply x then I know the power rule it's just n times x to the n minus 1 but if in place of x I have a function somewhat let's say complex function how do I handle well we have the chain rule and here here is the formula so the derivative of u to the n is n times u n minus 1 multiplied by du dx so it's the derivative of inside let's do some examples okay derivative of 5x cubed minus x to the 4 to the power 7 well regard the inside as u then this is simply 7 times u to the power 6 times the derivative of u so this is 7 times 5x cubed minus x to the 4 raised power 6 and then I need to take the derivative of inside so derivative of 5x cubed minus x4 well this is uh, 15x squared minus 4x cubed right and uh, we can leave expression in this form no problem let's look at the, the, the next one why it's related to the power we don't see any power here right but we, what we could do is you could apply the quotient rule here however power rule is a bit easier if you realize it as a power rule so where is the power rule well I could write this expression as 3x minus 2 to the power minus 1 now applying the power rule so again this is 3x minus 2 is my u so this becomes uh, minus 1 right by by the power rule it's minus 1 so this exponent comes to the front multiplied by u to the u decrease the exponent by 1 so minus 2 times the derivative of u so what do we get here minus so u to the minus 2 is 1 over u squared so this is 3x minus 2 squared then multiplied by u prime so u prime u is 3x minus 2 the derivative of 3x minus 2 is simply 3 Next, let's take the derivative of sine to the power 5. So I evaluate sine of x and then raise to the power 5, right? Multiply 5 times. So this is 5 times sine of power 4 multiplied by the derivative of inside, derivative of u, which is sine of x. So it would be cosine of x. Okay? Um, right. So what is next well from uh, the derivative of e to the u we know if you let u is equal to the 3x plus 1 in square root then this derivative would be e to the u times the u prime right now what is u prime u prime I could write it as 3x plus 1 to the power 1 half right and then take the derivative of this by uh, the chain rule this is 1 over 2 times 3x plus 1 
you decrease the degree by 1, so 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half, and then I multiply by derivative of inside, which is derivative of 3x plus 1, gives me 3. So then, if I write it out, this is e to the u, where u is 3x plus 1, multiplied by derivative of u, which is here we see that uh, 1 half times 3 is 3 over 2, times, um, I could write it like 1 over square root of 3x plus 1. The last problem that we consider is the following. So we are given a function y is equal to 1 over 1 minus 2x cubed. And we would like to show that its slope uh, of every tangent line is always positive. So if you like, uh, here is the uh, graph. So you can, if you consider any tangent line, we see that this angle is less than 90 degrees. So all these angles are uh, pos have positive slopes, right? All of them. So visually, we can see that, yes, this is true. But how do we prove it? Well, let's take the derivative. Let's write y as 1 minus 2x to the minus 3 and take the derivative because slope is equal to the derivative, right? So what is this? By power rule, this is minus 3, 1 minus 2x to the minus 4 multiplied by the derivative of inside, so which is, if you take the derivative, 1 minus 2x becomes minus 2. So this is 6 divided by 1 minus 2x to the power 4. And clearly, x to the 1 half is not in the domain, right? So 1 half cannot be in the domain. So this is the sort of, uh, vertical uh, asymptote. So as far as x is not uh, 1 half, because it's not uh, in, the, in the domain, we see that this is always positive. Because 6 is positive, you're raising to the power 4, which is even, so it's also positive. right? So the slope is always positive. I'll stop here.